Hello guys and girls, welcome back to Air Force Explanation Part 2 and let's get to the video. Hey guys, welcome back. So this is the Air Force Explanation Part 2. So the Part 2 um, on the number 4. So I just talk about the hand buff because mostly of you already understanding the buff already enough from five cam you have to do it on six so I'll just show you the cam again so the cam buff basically is very important um from the last one uh we doesn't really need up, up to six um cam buff but now we have to up to the six cam buff to get the 18 percent additional buff on our attack and resist but uh, do you aware that actually 5 cam is still not the bad one? Because if you can see from the first one, the level one is um, who deploy on the same cam, you will get 2%, and then 4%, and then 8%. When you get 5 of the same cam, you will get 15%. But if you get additional of one more, just get additional of 3%. Actually, 15% to 18% is not very um, game changers. But of course, if that is what you need for your setup of your troop, then that is of course is a benefit and additional. But of course, that if it is not, then better you have a better setup instead of just cross yourself to have a maximum camp up because it's not worth it. Sometimes you have to understand the correct setup is much more important than a few percent on your troop because your troop itself is already doing their best thing. But if you're having a wrong setup, then you can't play the style that you want to play. So I will just recommend that anyone try to stay on the 5 cam instead of a 6 cam, even though you have the air frost, because the 5 cam with 50% is the most uh, variable. From the 8 up to 15 is a huge jump that you have 5 instead of 4. But from the 5 to 6, actually just gain another 3%. It's not, not that game changes. So this is the first thing I will talk about. So, and a setup that actually a lot of you already understand, the blue artillery is the best one. I already tried to do it. And the air frost, I already explained on the part one. I will just um, try my best to get two fighters on the blue and then one on the red armor. After that, I will try to get um, three um, blue artillery. Uh, super heavy still standing strong. I need them to, I need him to tank and stitch. Somebody at all. Then I have one additional slot for my ground troop that I can choose whether I want to play on the rocket or I can play on medium tank. But I since I doesn't have a medium tank, I will just consider that play my rocket because rocket can still hit and run and moving very fast. That is still fun to me because if you limited yourself like me, I have two um two air frost the two blue air frost and then one uh, I will change to the red one to make it stick but every time I try to you know attack someone I have to be very very slow from my face to somewhere else if I inside a um, mask down I hardly can support any background or my war zone because let's say somebody just kill me and I'm out of the air lift I can't get back to the fighter uh, area then I just you know become a useless to our fighter team so I should always have one mobile uh, setup that I can fly to them. And please to be aware, the red air frost farmer is just a one-way trip. So let's say this uh, gray one I try to attack. It will take a long time to fly from my face to the other side to just to kill um, one enemy. Might be success, might not be success, but that's not the point. The point is uh, on the middle, you can't... Um, change the order, try to attack the other one. So if you are using some mobile on the ground, you can just um, no command them here and there and run away. So you can attack this one and attack that one. If somebody try to airlift there, you can block them or not. So but if your air frost, you just try to attack one guy, you cannot change the direction and change your mind uh, on the this side. Like now attacking, you cannot change. Same to the red one. So and then your red one have to always go in and go out, go in and go out. That's a little bit slow. 
But if you have one mobile, let's say you have a medium tank, you can use your medium tank to you know, play around on the ground and do the magic things that you always do on the ground in the battlefield. So that is how you should not always uh, limit yourself. That's how I try to you know, take one slot to be a mobile. Once the Moscow is here, I can play my style to have my support on the battlefield. So this number four I want to talk about is the setup and the pen buff. Actually, the setup is much more important than the pen buff. So which one you need? Actually, uh, whether you need a fighter or the armor, like I already say that um I will just change to um blue fighter jet. Um, mainly it's not because the blue is the best one on the fighter, but mainly it's because I need two blue plus three artillery blue on the camp buff to get the maximum 15% the camp buff. So that once uh, my troop is moving like one side to the other side, and then I put some troop back to defend my base, then I can just deploy my fighter, two fighter jet on the field. Just to protect my team to siege or protect my teammate to siege, so nobody can try to play around with the red armor or the any armor try to move around nearby us. If they try to use the you know the fighter jet try to attack us, I have two group of fighter jet and I supposed to be have a upper hand instead of um just one fighter jet and two armor because my ground troop is already two hundred level, it's maximum level. So I have a lot of uh, confidence that I will win on the ground, but I need some protection on the air because if I try to play on the ground when I just very far away from my base, somebody just keep on using the very low damage or some effective damage to my ground troop with the armor, or there might be ten players try to use the armor, then become so effective, then I have nothing to counter. That's how I should have two fighter jet. Just to protect my ground troop because I confident on my ground troop will be win the ground and the win the fight. So you should really understand. Uh, you might try to you know, learn how I should set up my troop, but that is might not be the only play style. You should always look for it because if you have a light tank and you not worry about the the, the air, let's say um, let's say I do one um small testing on let's say this area i'll just deploy my armor to this side and i'll use the fighter to chase it and let's see what is the what is the differences on both of them so you can see both of them will fly almost exactly the same speed you can see the distance is almost the same the same speed that means if one of your fighter jet try to chase the farmer, they will be having a hard time to chase them down unless they try to stay on the area. Let's say later this farmer will stop on one area and my fighter jet will do their magic to them because they are no longer away from the area. Let's say this fighter already here and the farmers try to you know, do their magic on the attack my group. And this fighter will kill them off as it's not a speed concern. But if you have a light tank playstyle or you are just mobile playstyle on the battlefield, you can consider to put three bomber, no need to have an air jet, I uh, mean, no need to have a fighter to anti air. So you can use your light tank, use your medium tank just to chase anybody. And when you see somebody try to put their artillery on the field, the artillery moving so slow. Or they try to put their super heavy uh, away from their base, then you can just use your armor to chase them down. Anywhere you're aware somebody try to use the fighter jet to kill your armor, you can just withdraw three of them. But if you play perfectly, your three armor will be so annoying and contribute so much to the battlefield. And please to be aware if your armor near enemy base the area, your armor will get shut down. Because uh, that is how the base automatically will defend, even though you are not attacking their base, but you are just moving around. If their base become red color, their base will shoot you down. So you have to always aware that your farmer flying the area, whether they have an enemy base or not. If there is no enemy base, you can chase their open unit on the ground. 
and playing three farmer actually is very scary i mean to your enemy because they can't move their troop out without the fighter jet on the air to protect them but uh you also have to be give and take because you have three set of farmer you just have a fighter so if everybody just deploy their fighter like this then your farmer can't move uh, near that area also one of the problem but if you are playing a teamwork you should always understand if you are light time player your medium player your mobile player you just chase down anything quick on the field so you do not need to worry about which side have uh, enemy which side doesn't have you just have to look for the opportunity and try to use the farmer to attack them so the best most effective one is the red one but if you want to invest three of them to become a seven point two style it's uh, very hard uh, to do because uh, just getting one three a seven point two star is on also not easy job and uh, it's hard to make it but it's up to you i just give you uh, some idea what you should feel so if i'm a stitch uh, i'm actually a stitch group so i will just have two fighter group and then one of the farmer group because i still need some farmer to steal off when i see somebody off and then i will have one um, rocket just to support from away the uh, battlefield to have mobile support so that is the number five i will talk about on the track two so um number six i have to give uh, some credit and feature to uh women yt so just take this away and i'll show you so this is the farmer damage comparison that you can find from the youtube so you do a very good job with a same level and same uh, research everything just to show you three type of a farmer how's the damage they are making and how effective and you should really take a look on their video i mean look at these videos it's very helpful before the game even have an air force he's already released uh, a lot of information and help a lot of us to understand how the air force work and not work so the most highlight actually the air force is about the farmer the fighter actually two of them is almost about the same just take blue because i need the blue cam if you having a Let's say a red one or maybe you're having a vanguard one you can also try to max their buff to five cam so definitely try to take one or two times to take a look at raymond yt his youtube is very good and this comparison will show you three armor jet how they do and how they are output so let's get back to the list so the list this is the last one is the farmer versus tank artillery infantry and base so this is the last topic i will talk about and let's talk about this topic before I talk about the topic we need to clear resources yep okay, so this is the video and i have credit back to um mr jason because it's helped me to understand the red one so you can see um we already coordinate to show the red one because uh jason have a level 17 70 level grip edge uh the farmer so i need him to show because i doesn't have that so you see uh, from his face we'll come up with the farmer the red one so we just look at the video now you can see the jason having three um farmer to shoot directly to one target on each of the group you can see the other half of the Raven doesn't get the damage, but the key of the target get the damage directly. So after the three times hit, already do more than half the HP. Then this is a thirty-three level Raven. After the fourth time, already kill off the Raven tank. is thirty-three level, and uh, Jason's like uh, his armor jet is about seventy level without modification and not yet max out everything so if you have a 200 levels it's a definitely different story and so that i show you another video so this is the second attempt and this time he will try to attack a heavy tank but this one um the level is a little bit low, lower on the ribbon 29 but this is a heavy tank so you still can see like the first and second time not so effective might think about um, it's not good actually if you see on what you can see actually the heavy tank already dead 
So beside that already, they still haven't performed the number four time. So you can see um uh, the Raven group already of four of the, the group of the tank and only left one. So you can see so so much uh, effective with the red one. But of course he can uh, he also show me the the red one to attack some inventory is not very effective because it's a target thing. So the red one try to attack um the inventory like my super heavy try to attack them is very not effective it'll take a long time because they will try to kill one by one one by one uh kill a long time until you can kill them and you know that the air force is performing by uh, how many times four times three times so they can't kill the whole group that is how um the play game on the little vanguard one come in to aoe the whole one group that is how the explanation when you kill the whole group will get the, the damage from the vanguard but the red one you cannot have that uh, effect you only have one or two one or two will get killed but of course why the red one is the best one is because at least you kill one or two instead of like put some damage to you know like the vanguard put some damage to them they haven't dead then they can retreat they can heal back uh, that's one of the problem but the vanguard one can do more on like kill some artillery or kill the enemy building but uh, killing enemy building is not a very good choice because he doesn't have the max uh, air force. That's how we all suggest to have a great one because that can directly impact on the battlefield. You can just pick up like the group. You can just pick up one or two the raven. I mean the enemy troop directly instead of spread your damage to the whole group that you can't kill anyone and then they just kill back on the group and your airplane have to fly back to your base. Also. Your airplane try to attack again. Like now, I want to attack again. They already full HP, so it's like forever. You can't do the whole group. But if you do the focusing, killing one or two, they will just you know gain you something instead of you know um AOE damage is not very good. Like uh the blue one I think already mentioned is the worst one because once you aim this area, then you cannot change it, and enemy move up from that area, then you just uh you no know, farming the nothing area from there but of course if there is a big fight you can just you know um try to try your luck to attack but of course if you can choose why don't you choose the vanguard and the red one that you do not need luck you just directly to deploy i want to attack which enemy they will just perform their thing uh then they will do their magic even though the enemy try to move away they'll just chase them down instead of trying to do this uh the, the blue one and attack any things by luck and you have to always predict that uh, your timing from your base to the battlefield, how long the time, whether the enemy from 90 seconds will move around this area or not, or maybe he will you know, turn around or not. So the fighter jet, the main purpose is each time you move your ground troop out from your base, you should always uh, deploy one or two fighters to protect them because uh, now everybody should have a farmer. So nothing is very um safe on the battleground unless uh you already know you're winning the war, then you do that. But if the farmer come in, then you try to run away, the fighter jet try to back up is a little bit too late. That's how you should always put a fighter jet. You do not need to worry about your fighter jet is low level or mid level or high level because the farmer can't touch your fighter. So your fighter can fly there twenty four seven. Unless somebody tries to use another fighter to kill your fighter, then your fighter should uh, throw away. But the fight enemy fighter cannot touch your ground troop, so it's no harm. That's a uh, ground. So that's how you should think about your setup. I think I already explained a lot about um the new officer. I'll come on the next update, and then the next update also have a migration server to, um update. So everybody hopefully learn one or two things today. Thank you very much for watching, and see you guys next time.